Good morning. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, a very exciting topic for Saturday afternoon at SAGES. Uh, there are a lot of histology slides, so I apologize, and hopefully we can make this somewhat uh, interesting. So, no disclosures. However, I will be talking about MESH, and without, um, you can't talk about MESH without talking about the commercial name. So, of course, we're going to be talking about the uh, specific MESHs in each of these studies we're going to be reviewing. <coughs> I want to talk about, kind of expand upon the, the mesh materials and why that's important to tissue integration. And really that is what drives the inflammatory response and ultimately the tissue integration. So we're going to explain what, what specifically we're looking at to find that perfect mesh. And then briefly I also want to talk about barriers because barriers is a part, a component of the mesh that will, will also affect uh, tissue integration. So. So the three things I'm going to be talking about as far as the mesh itself and the makeup of that mesh is not only the chemistry of the mesh, so is it polypropylene, is it polyester, but what's the density and, and why is also pore size important? So I'm going to specifically be talking about synthetic mesh. Uh, so the three listed down below there. Now the expanded PTFE, I'm going to be talking about that laminar version, but also the monofilament knit version, which really acts like a large pore mesh as well. So, but sticking to the synthetic meshes for this talk. And we're going to be describing heavyweight and lightweight in a very broad uh, spectrum here for this. But really, the density of a mesh is related to the surface area that affects the tissue. So the more material that is in contact with the tissues will affect the infl inflammatory response and also ultimately the tissue integration. And then finally, pore size. What we found very early on is that pore size affects the uh, the way that the mesh gets integrated and the fibrosis that occurs. And as the pore size decreases, the bridging fibrosis will counteract, will touch each other and create a, a solid scar plate. And that has a lot of implications on the way that material gets integrated. You can see here, this is actually from Dr. Melman's group, uh, in the top there you have a microporous mesh and you can see that solid blue, that solid blue scar plate that's formed and you can imagine there isn't a lot of transportation of, of fluid and materials through that, there's not a lot of ingrowth and in tissue uh, that's getting integrated into that mesh. So when you see the bottom there, a nice wide pore mesh, much more thin but getting completely integrated into that tissue. So this is what I've kind of derived uh, as far as the inflammatory response and how it's affecting the tissue integration. Of course, we're going to have some kind of wound contracture that's natural with any kind of uh, inflammatory response. But what we want to do is limit that because that really dictates the mesh shrinkage. It can cause folding. Folding can injure the bowel, can really cause a lot of havoc in the intra-abdominal space. The solid scar plate we want to reduce as much as possible because like I said before that impairs fluid transportation uh, across that area and you can certainly see seroma formation as a consequence. And finally also compliance and how that goes hand in hand with rigidity. So you don't want a solid rock hard piece of mesh sitting in there so that's another thing you really want to try to avoid by reducing the inflammatory response. So this is from Novitsi's group looking at different weighted polypropylene meshes and also comparing that to uh, the laminar PTFE and polyester uh, meshes. And this was in an animal model. They looked at foreign body reaction and also fibrosis as uh, a surrogate for collagen reorganization and tissue integration. And both of the, both with fibrosis and with foreign body reaction, the, uh, the the, the graphs look very similar and showing that the less inflammatory response occurred with the polyester, or I'm sorry, the polypropylene as compared to the polyester and the PTFE. And you can see it's a pretty dramatic difference there. And that happened both early on at the four week mark and also at the 12 week mark. Now if we take this a little bit further and talk about shrinkage as it relates to mesh uh, integration, this was a nice study looking at polyester versus polypropylene and this is a significant difference in shrinkage and what we also found in this study was that early on, so this happens within three months, this shrinkage, so timed perfectly with the inflammatory response and that's a durable result that happens over time, it doesn't seem to continue over time and that's a difference of 20% there, that's a, that is a percentage of shrinkage and you can see that the polypropylene had far less shrinkage than the polyester by a rate of 
And why is that important? Because we don't want this. We don't want this to occur. This was the original on the left there, um, and this was the exoplanet mesh on the right. And most studies are looking at somewhere between 30 and 50 percent shrinkage of mesh. And mostly, most of the studies are looking at polypropylene. But it's, very, it's highly variable. If you're looking at different animal, animal models and things like that, you're going to get different rates. But somewhere it's fairly acceptable to say about 30 to 50 percent. And that's why the overlap of a mesh onto the hernia repair is, is incredibly important to consider when you're placing the mesh. When looking specifically at pore size, and tissue integration. This study it was really a nice, a nice. Uh, it was actually a pig study, looking at whether heavyweight and uh, lightweight meshes, and also looking at small pore and large pore meshes, had any difference in the degree of shrinkage. The heavyweights actually had a pretty low shrinkage, and that kind of relates to the stability of the mesh. But really, the most confounding factor here when it came to shrinkage was the porosity size. So the smaller pore meshes had a high, high degree of shrinkage. If you look at it from a different way, this is looking at it from mesh integration, so the tissue integration. And as expected, the large pore were able to integrate into the tissues far superiorly over the small pore. But it, that was tempered with the density of the material itself. So all of these factors have to be brought together. And you have to weigh kind of what's the better mesh for the patient that you're specifically working on. And it, you know, the largest pore, the smallest pore, the heavyweight, the lightweight, all of that really comes into play with one another until you find that sweet spot, which is the perfect mesh. This study out of 2012 looked again at polypropylene, but then compared it to this monofilament knit poly, uh, PTFE that I talked about earlier, which really looks like a large pore mesh. On the left there, you can see it's the heavyweight polypropylene, and on the right, the lightweight and this monofilament knit. And what they found is that the PTFE did drive a lot of early on inflammatory changes in comparison to the polypropylene. But long term, if we looked at the modulus of the elasticity so the tensile, in the tensile strength, is that it really started to become equivalent as you got further out. So on the right there, you can see at 180 days, there really wasn't any significant difference between the meshes that were used. And this also was consistent with the biochemical strength of those meshes. Additionally, they looked at collagen reorganization. So what we'd like to see is that the collagen type 3 gets replaced by collagen type 1. And that just shows maturity of the, of the integration. And you can see the collagen in red here, maybe hard to project, but on the right there, you see a significant amount in that large pore um, polypropylene as well as the monofilament knit PTFE. So really, these were uh, three very, um, very consistent you know, meshes that had very good outcomes, very good strength. Um, this was repeated, uh, or actually very, very similarly studied by Dr. Melman's group. And they looked at these three very similar meshes. And they, again, found that the tensile strength, um, the stiffness, all of those things were really consistent between the three. But interestingly enough, when they looked at those meshes, you can see the deformation of the heavyweight polypropylene there on the left. And so certainly, we have to balance, like I said, all of these things together when we're talking about the perfect mesh. So things that we can derive from that. So larger pore size tends to reduce the scar plate, have a higher compliance and better tissue integration. And of course, we're looking for a lightweight mesh to reduce that inflammatory response. Polypropylene tends to do the best in a lot of these studies, but there are pluses to the other two uh, meshes as well. And finally, I want to talk about barriers very quickly. Um, when is this important? This is when we're talking about mesh place in the intraperitoneal space, where that mesh is coming into direct, direct contact with the intra-abdominal cavity. So we found out early on that that can be a huge problem. When you place an uncoated mesh within the intra-abdominal cavity, uh, you get about 62% rate of adhesions. And these aren't just flimsy adhesions. These are dense adhesions. And in this study, when they went, patients went back in for reoperative intervention, whether it be from the hernia or something else, they had a rate of 62% of adhesions, but 21% of those had a small bowel resection. So really dense adhesions that were causing some significant problems. So that's really where we started to come out and look for the ideal mesh for the eye palm position. And you can see the meshes listed below here. Of course, this is not an inclusive study, but it's really two broad categories, using PTFE as your barrier and then some kind of absorb absorbable coating to the mesh as your barrier that would degrade over time. 
This study is looking at that use of PTFE as your barrier, and they found that there were very minimal adhesions in the reoperative setting after this PTFE was placed. And you see some great pictures there. That would be nice if that happened every time you went back in. But their conclusions was that 91% of the time that they had very thin, if at all, adhesions after PTFE was placed in the IPOM position. The only dense adhesions that they came across were dense adhesions to titanium tacks that were located uh, along the edge of the PTFE. Again, another study looking at uh, the different types of mesh in an IPOM position, and you can see we have uh, two very good meshes here. We have a PTFE, and then they also looked at a variety of absorbable coated meshes. They found that the adhesion rate was still 60, 66 percent, so still where we saw with the uncoated meshes. But what was different was the tenacity of those adhesions. So they had a lower tenacity adhesion rate uh, as quantified by various things, but also looking at the ability to take down those adhesions, take them down safely, the time it took to take down those adhesions. And you can see that the PTFE and the absorbable barrier coated were really successful in doing that and reducing uh, the tenacity of those adhesions. And what we're really trying to get to are those thin, filmy adhesions that you can really just take an instrument and swipe it down right off of the mesh. That's really the ideal. So some conclusions that we can draw, again, large pore and uh, lighter density meshes tend to be better uh, integrated into the tissues, and barriers are important, especially in the IPOM setting. So if you take all that information, the perfect mesh, in my opinion, is certainly still elusive. So uh, one day we may come up with it, and, uh, but based on these studies, it just pluses and minus to each of the meshes, and we have to be aware of when and how to use those meshes in different settings to get the best possible outcomes. Thank you very much.